So what do eggs have to do with beer? Apart from being a good breakfast um, brew day, these ones are spent grain fed eggs. So all my spent grains go to the chickens. Now look at that yolky goodness. And some sriracha. Just for you, big banana. Happy Hungry Wednesday. It's a Thursday. And, um, yeah. I've got a beer to try. Now, it's not an epic imp, which, um, it was a lovely beer actually. Um, this is a red ale from Luke at Wagon Brian. Um, he gave this beer to me ages ago, and um, yeah, in my fridge I completely forgot about it. So um, I think from memory, I, I'm not sure. I think it might have been Cascade, and obviously some red malts. But he left this in his fridge because he got too busy, and he left it fermenting for about three months, I think. So, um, this is going to be quite an old beer, but um, it's been sitting right. We'll give it a go. So, hopefully, it won't be like the last beer I opened on camera. We're, we're in a bit uh, fizzy, shall we say? Cracking beer, though. Cheers, Chris. Um, yeah, let's get it poured in. So yeah, she's crystal clear. I don't think this came off the keg. Nope, doesn't look like it. And I'm not sure how um, Luke brewed this. It obviously wasn't on his awesome drum kit, which you might have seen. Um, his great big shiny um, three vessel keg system, which if you haven't seen, you need to go and see it, man. Um, I think this might be a stove top. I'm not really sure, but um, yeah, let's get a nose on. Some good sweetness there, still a little bit of hop um, lingering there. Yeah, that, um, that hasn't hurt it sitting around for a while because, um, yeah, that clarity is superb. And um, not super red, but um, red enough for me. Enough waffling, let's get a taste on. Yeah, nice and malty. A um, little bit of sweetness there, but not too much. Um, it is a very, very tasty beer. I don't think it's super boozy. Um, it's quite light body. I'm suspecting it's around about 4 or so percent. And that carb on it. Is spot on. Oh. It's just a super clean, multi fresh ale. Um, not a lot of bitterness, a um, little bit of juice in it, but um, yeah, top beer. Cheers, Luke. Appreciate that. And um, yeah, speaking of Luke and um, other brew tubers, didn't manage to catch up with Luke, um, but he has got some stainless steel fermenters, which I was meant to pick up tonight, but uh, the missus got called into work. So what do you do? You do a homebrew Wednesday instead. So um, yeah, looking forward to seeing those. And caught up with some other brew tubers at Hallertau. So I caught up with Dean, um, aka Tube Dinos. I caught up with um, Sean, known as Megaton Brewing. Uh, Shadow Beast himself as well. So that was cool to see Alan and Chris at uh, No Quarter Brewing. So he made his way up from Taranaki. Which was awesome, and um, he bought a truck and trailer. I'm not going to go into why he did that, but um, yeah. I managed to um, smuggle some beers to him, which, as you might have seen in um, Tube Dino's video. So hopefully um, him and Aiden will be enjoying those beers at some point. And um, yeah, exchange some beers with um, young Sean. So that's really cool, looking forward to that. And um, Yes, once, a, once again, it's a really nice spot at Hallertau and, and good to catch up with some fellow brew tubers. Yeah, so what have I got? I brewed up a supercharger this weekend. Um, it's not the first time I've brewed up a supercharger. It's probably about the third, but um, I think the supercharger is the first brew that I did on my three-vessel 
system when I didn't know what I was doing. I still don't know what I'm doing, but I know a bit more. And um, yeah, I actually tried one the other day. It wasn't too bad, but um, just a heap of diacetyl and um, left it on the dry hops too long. So yeah, that wasn't so good. But yeah, this being the third incarnation, oh, the second incarnation was just too busy. Um, I was taking um, final gravities with the um, refractometer and not calibrating for um, fermented water anyway. So um, when you start ending up with seven kilo grain bills and um, you're still only just making five percent, something is wrong. Anyway, um, this third incarnation should be good, and um, I think with my wheel pulling techniques, it, it should um, yeah hopefully have the aroma and. Um, just a clean taste of them after. Uh, two packs of USO4, so not normally the yeast of choice for a supercharger, but um, I want a little bit of fruit in it, so yeah, I thought I'd give it a go. And um, that took off within within six hours. It was just um, roaring its head off, so double pitching. I'm all about that. Did a bit of, um, not a video on how to take pH, but I just thought I'd do a video on how I take pH and um, do a reading um, after obviously I've adjusted all the um, the salts and the brew but I'm um, just taking a pH reading and um, I always use acid malt because I'm on tank water and um, it's just pretty neutral so um, yeah I boost it down then I hear the daughter crying so I better wrap this you up, it's about all I've got time for um, yeah I'll show you some clips and um, cheers guys Happy Harbour Wednesday, and um, cheers Luke for the beer mate, she's a cracker. A little bit of water chemistry for what it's worth, as I say, I know um, five fifths of F4 about water chemistry, apart from the bit of reading, and a bit of following some esteemed YouTubers like Tony Yates, etc. Um, yeah, so this is just a cheapy one, well I say cheap, it's about 80 bucks, it wasn't that $20 one you can get. Um, God knows, like, whether this is, I think this is just some generic housing that they do and copy it. But anyway, it's called a Digitech, wherever they're from. Um, so, yeah, you've got your buffer solution, one-handed, that's skills. Um, you've always got to, well, with cheap ones anyway, you've always got to recalibrate them. So you'll see at the moment, straight out of the packet, um, you've got to keep the probe moist with a um, wet bit of sponge. It's reading 5.5. .5. So, anyway, we'll chuck that in the buffer solution. And just leave it a little while, because some of those things change. But looks like that's reading 7.2, 7.3. Once again, it is a cheapie. I mean, ideally, you really want two decimal places because I don't know whether that's um, 7.38 or whether it's 7.30. Measure the buffer solution temperature, 17.4. So you can see there, it is in between 15 and 20 degrees. So without that second decimal place, I don't know how far off I am. All I do know is it was reading 7.3. And um, it needs to be reading a lot closer to seven, so I'll adjust that with the little screwdriver in the air. But and I need to be about 17 degrees. I need to be roughly at 7.0, probably two or three. But I'm not, because I don't know. So I need to get that two decimal place pH meter. When I've got some funds and um yeah but at least it's calibrated and if it was really cold i should be at seven point or well, closer to 7.1 and um if it was really warm i should be just sub seven but at least it's calibrated it was wildly out it was 7.3 so always calibrate your ph meter and if you are looking at getting one look at to be honest i wouldn't bother with one of those little cheapy ones i'd be going to at least a two decimal place pH meter just to get that accuracy that you require. Anyway, I've got some wort that I've collected and a bit of a water bath just to chill it down. So that little water bath has worked. We're at 24 degrees. Um, that way it's not going to burn out my probe. Um, 
has been calibrated. Um, so, you know, to be honest, we're really just looking at ballpark figures. We're aiming for 5.2. Um, you got to also make sure you clean off your probe from any water. Obviously, that's going to affect it, so just dry off your, your probe. So we're sitting about 5.4. What do I want? I want 5.2. Um, is this close enough? Yes. Could I change it? I could add some acid malt or some lactic acid. There we go, 5.3. So pretty heavy with that, with that 200 gram acid malt addition. I've got it in the ballpark. I'm not going to use 5.2 stabilizer because I've read lots of stuff that says it's a bit shit. I don't know though, but um, yeah, there's no need to if you can add some kind of natural ingredients. So yeah, 5.3, happy days. So as I was trying to articulate before, you can see I, I made this um, aluminium kind of uh, chassis for the Monster Mill rather than paying for it. And um, I made it nice and then of course I had to modify it to fit it. But pretty much there's a gap in there and a um, bit of a gap in there. I need to remake it or buy one. I just hate the idea of um, paying for a shitty one that I could make better if I had the time. Bloody hell. Anyway, um, yeah, so a few grains are getting through, which means you get a few kind of whole ones, but it's pretty negligible and I overcompensate a few grams. So, yeah, some good colour there. And, um, yeah, clarity's getting there. I guess you can kind of see through there a bit more, but um, we've got about 20 minutes left of the mash. It's relatively cold this morning, so I have had to flick the element back on a couple of times. Um, maybe this month. I might end up being able to fabricate a bit of a control panel. Um, I've got this idea that it might be kind of a work in progress, so at least I need one pit at this stage, rather than getting three. So we'll see what we can do about maybe up here. That uh, blackboard I stole from school, it was being thrown out. So yeah, I might fit a single pit control box up there and we'll see if we can look at fabricating that up and if I make sort of like a housing and then a removable face plate it means I could adapt it later on as I add buttons etc but really at this stage I just need a simple control for that HLT because that's all that's required the boiler's happy with its two and a half thousand watts giving me the creep boil so yeah sort it out and join the union so, you might have seen me install this a little while ago, at least you hit it in the background. Um, I wasn't that happy with it. Basically, it's missing the earth on it, and um, the retailer that installed it for me didn't put the earth on it. So, yeah, I need to get that wired up properly, and basically, what was happening is, because it's um, colder than the steam, it was condensing, basically just dripping and kind of filling up that motor so it wasn't ideal at all really so um i want to get that seen to and maybe make some sort of water trap on it and um i need to duct it out the window there or rather cut a hole in the tin but at the moment i can't be bothered so in the meantime i've got a little fan you've got no fans which is just blowing that steam out the door. So 22.6 I'm using quite a bit more water but um, that's going straight into the fermenter at pitchable temps and um, just a quick look at my water consumption you've got all these so those are about 50 litres so you've probably got close to 200 litres, um, luckily I'm on tank water, tank water so I'm just using a bit of power, but I'm quite thirsty, but that'll all go on the fruit trees. 